Hello, ma'am. <laughs> nice to see you. Nice to see you as well. I would like to start with uh, thanking you, ma'am. Especially, you have been a great support for NLR. And uh, I bring uh, so much of gratitude and uh, uh, love and regards from my director as well as from the whole team's part. You have been a partner to us, uh, helping the leprosy affected people in Delhi, Uttarakhand, and in Bihar also. SNJ Charitable Trust had uh, supported around 115 families. Uh, we are really thankful to you, ma'am. Uh, thanks, Arun. Um, thanks for your kind words. I am. Uh indebted to you for asking me to uh, speak on this very important topic. Leprosy affected people are never far away from my mind. I am Nina Julka, founder trustee and CEO of SNJ Charitable Trust. Uh, and I have experience in the sector working almost for 10 years. So what you had asked us was, what are the current challenges faced by leprosy affected people? Uh, what NGOs can do to support the leprosy affected people to let them come out of their problems? And how can NGOs contribute to removing stigma and discrimination faced by such people of which there is a lot? So I'll try and answer all these three questions um, and I'll give you maybe time at the end to ask any supplement questions that, uh, that you wish to do. So the challenges faced by leprosy affected people are many. All the organizations working in this field know very well. Leprosy is a disease of poverty and there is cyclic poverty. You know, when I say cyclic poverty, I mean many people who are born into this and unfortunately die in within having this disease. And, poverty. The other thing I do think is that there is ignorance of rights. I see so many people, um, you know, legislations and uh, laws which I'm informed about, um, which, again, which are human rights, but uh, leprosy affected people do not know that that is their right. And then the two major ones, which we already know, is the lack of education and lack of medical help. And when I say lack of medical help, I mean lack of timely medical help because many diseases can be uh, prevented if we take prophylactic uh, action. So how can NGOs support leprosy affected people? That is the challenge. One of the things which we do and NGOs can do is raise awareness. You know, many people think, uh, especially in the West, I have contact with a lot of doctors and many of the doctors who are qualifying now do not even know what leprosy looks like. It is not taught in that curriculum and uh, they have zilch knowledge about leprosy. So you can see, uh, raising awareness is not just for people on the street, but also in medical professionals in, in the West at, all over, really. The other thing which we can do is to provide information and awareness of rights and responsibilities in Jugis. I think this is a really, really huge thing which we can do in terms of making people aware that what your rights are. And many people probably do know what their rights are, or they talk in terms of and there is a more than a uh, more than truth in this statement as well. But you know, in terms of and, and there is some progress in terms of you know that people now have the Aadhaar card and all that. But in terms of what their rights are and what they should be uh, claiming or asking for is not there, you know, because I always find that me sitting in UK can do only that much for leprosy affected people. What I see my role as is to empower them where they can be 
talking about their own rights and asking them. And it isn't just about rights either. It's also about responsibilities. That ultimately, whether you are a leprosy affected person or you are in terms of normal or without disease, you ultimately responsibility for your health and well being lies with you. And that is a big thing to understand and also to shift the uh, mental makeup that, you know, there are a lot of things that you can do yourself. So, so it's both about providing information and awareness of rights and responsibilities. And the third thing, which again, sitting here, uh, I am not able to do, uh, is that I think we need to engage local government, officials, uh, businesses, and media. So when I talked about my first point in raising awareness, you know, what do you see? What images do you see? Yes, we need to uh, put out positive images, but the local government and officials need to know, need to be brought, not just on election times, but at other times as well, uh, to show where some of these people are living. I know, you know, that, um, and I am on LinkedIn and all those businesses, you know, and I'm always trying to put, and I get so many emails from CEOs and what have you every day trying to, wanting to link in with me. What I want to do, it's okay, other people wanting to link in with, with me, but I want businesses to link in with leprosy colonies. Because I think there is a huge, huge, huge business opportunity which businesses are missing. I'll come back to this point later, later in my presentation. And of course, media as well. In England, we have laws, you know, and I'm not saying law will do everything, but legally, you know, we have race, gender, disability, and, and now sexual orientation laws where people shouldn't be discriminated against if they fall in any of these categories. And I think the same is there in England, in India as well. But again, people don't, how many people, you know, you don't see it in media, any positive images of people from leper colonies who, who have made it. And again, I will come back to this point uh, later in my presentation. Again, a very big thing that we can do is to provide educational opportunities, both vocational and professional education sponsorship. We need to provide information on self-care and treatment. I know in some parts this is going on, but I think there needs to be more of that. And the last, but by no means least, is where we need local government and businesses uh, help is to build and maintain hygienic living conditions. Again, uh, I'll come back to this point later on in my presentation because um, we have done exactly that, engaged businesses. We've had, I would say, uh, some success because um, for SNJ, SNJ stands for success and joy. And I'd say, we are very joyful. Uh, we want to spread joy to people. In everything we do, that's, you know, we want how we are joyful. And if you're healthy, you are joyful, well-being to be spread to others and also the success. So we've had, I would say, some success um, in tackling these huge, huge issues. And some of our projects and successes, I just want, i uh, just mentioned here, uh, that um, we have built Pukka houses with obviously we are tied again with funding, but we have in response to hygienic uh, conditions, uh, we built a toilet and a shower complex. And it isn't just building it, it's maintaining it as well. So what we have done is we've employed a local person who we pay and we give them cleaning pro uh, products uh, to keep the place clean. Again, in the past, we've had a, we, we believe that to, one of the ways you can engage people is to have <clears throat> interesting projects. 
So one of the projects we had in the past was gift a goat and name a goat. So where, where people could, um, at that time when we did this project, a goat cost, I don't know, 8,000 rupees or something like that. And again, a goat has, as you know, many um, advantages, provides milk, you can take a goat and blah, blah. So, <clears throat> and that generated quite a lot of uh, interest. Uh, and we were able to donate, uh, you know, I think 30 or 40 goats to this colony. The next one where I think we are very successful is providing motivation, educational counseling, and guidance to employment. In Jugis, where I visit in Haridwar, there are a lot of young people, right? And I am really, really, truly impressed by, you know, so many young people who have, um, who are on these open schools, you know, who have passed 10th and 12th, and, <clears throat> and I get their certificates uh, over here, you know, uh, because if they want to go further in vocational or uh, professional uh, education, then they need to have that basic education. And it's heartening to see that a lot of people uh, from the leper colonies are actually attending school uh, and have done 10th. And in terms of counseling as well, I'll come back to this, um, you know, how important educational counseling is. As you know, I'm an Ofsted inspector in UK. So <clears throat> I have a, a lifetime's experience in education. So I am able to uh, counsel people as to the best route uh, there would be to for further education and employment. Then we've had, uh, you know, a project all through with COVID-19 support where you know, we provided the masks, we made sure that people are safe. Adopt a family is another, one of our current projects where what we're asking is that so many people have lost um, the sole earning member of their family. Uh, and so we're asking families here to adopt the entire family. And uh, in the first instance, we make sure that these people have food delivered to them, you know? Uh, and and many and and you know there are uh, other advantages and when you you show people the image of a family then there are children and people want to know oh when uh, when is so and so's birthdays so that I can send something right so adopter family is currently going very strong uh, corporate funding for repairs as I said we have engaged um, corporations. Um, We've done roof repairs, for example, you know, where we, we have said, and as you know, CSR is there. Uh, so it is corporation's responsibility. Education sponsorship, as I said, <clears throat> we have, we, I feel particularly good about this project, ongoing project really, because there are so many people, so many people who want to sponsor, uh, young people for education. And in the last few years, uh, you know, I so many of the girls have uh, gone on to do GNM, which is general nursing courses. Now I know they're expensive courses, but I think once these girls have done a three year commitment, they are set for life, you know? So it's really just giving them, giving them a helping hand to go on the ladder, so to speak. And then ongoing, you know, our um, projects are like, you know, food, blanket and folding bed distributions. So we've had some successes um, in our projects. It was a, a jugi uh, in Haridwar. Uh, and this is, you know, years gone by. And this is what we did. Okay. When I said earlier, that some people die. Unfortunately, uh, Mahindru, this person, passed away. He was oh. there at that, uh, uh, you know, opening. But um, that's what I mean. It is a tragic life. But what you can't stop yeah. is the spirit 
I get quite emotional <laughs> when I talk about this. But uh, the day when I went there, uh, he was not in the leper colony. He had built with whatever he had uh, himself. Um, oh, how can I describe it? It was just a square piece of wood with some wheels and he was out. Mm -hmm. Begging, but he built that with his sheer hands. And when we asked where he is, that's where what he was doing. So he came you know, he, we are pleased that he got to stay in his home for a few years before he passed away. But then his family, um, we took care of. And this is uh, his daughter, you know, put a child in a school uniform and they're completely mm -hmm. transformed. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. And she's, uh, you know, now educated. Then this is something, you know, the toilet complex, you know, everybody needs uh, to be, to have the privacy of, yeah. uh, you know, having a decent shower and uh, toilet facility. Um, then about education. So these are the girls from um, leper colonies who we are sponsoring they are doing computer studies. They are doing GNM courses. I didn't have, yesterday I was uh, putting this presentation together. I didn't have time because it, it's last 10 years yeah. materials that we've got. Um, but I've just selected a few. These are our current girls who are uh, doing computer courses in Haridwar. And then coming finally, how can yeah. NGOs contribute to removing stigma? I think, and, and discrimination, I think we need to share the success stories. We need to use social media. We need to use positive images and we need to explode the myth and focus on reality. It's not what they can't do, it is what they can do. And they can do uh, a lot of things. Yeah. We need to tap into the World Health Organization resources and really what we are doing now, network and bring people together to share ideas. Mm -hmm. Bringing people together is really very close to my heart because um, again, in different countries, you have different problems. Yeah. In England, people live in big houses very comfortably, but the biggest thing here is loneliness. Yeah. Loneliness is a killer disease. And that's the mm -hmm. campaign that we are doing in England. So we okay. have, we don't just have projects in, the, in India, we have projects in UK as well. Mm -hmm. And one of the projects actually is called bringing people together, especially in COVID, when people couldn't get out, there was no social interaction. Uh, we trained people in using platforms that we are using now, like Zoom. And uh, we brought people together to combat loneliness through Zoom. And this project is continuing. So we have sessions Monday to Friday for different audiences, different skills uh, in bringing people together. And one of my, uh, well, not just the vision, something which we did last year is we put um, a lot of people, well, death is a certainty, right? Yeah. yeah, when we are born, we have to die. Yeah. A lot of people lost their loved ones in COVID. And one person, a friend and a, an SMG supporter, just came back in just in time in 2020 uh, when her father had passed away. Well, she wanted to do something in his memory back there. And what we said was that. Um, we, you know, she sponsored three mobility bikes, right? Yeah. And uh, we don donated, she won we put them in the leper colony. But mm -hmm. it isn't just that. What we went one step further, because when we went to the leper colony, we organized the whole thing so that she could see the whole event yeah. on Zoom. Here, 
Her family could see it in Delhi and all over India. Mm -hmm. And we managed it so that they could actually see where the uh, funds are going and, you know, that they could yeah. see it in uh, reality, how it is going to, how losing her dad and his memory is going to benefit those who are living. So that was just uh, and then sharing ideas. So when we did that one, one of my visions is to bring people from the leper colony together to give them enough skills so that they can interact with people in the West. Yeah. You know, a lot of people can speak Hindi, aisi koi baat nahi hai, or, mm-hmm. and then people, when they come into contact, you know, um, really closely, uh, there's nothing more, you know, uh, more effective than just texts and what have you. So people, I, I think we, I'm still working on that project at the moment. Right. Yeah. And I also want to share one of our big success stories from the Chugis, which is uh, Vikas's success story. Now, he's a guy I met uh, in 2017 when I visited. And he had done this drawing where he said, believe in yourself. You know, a happy-go-lucky happy child. And, uh, and as you can see, it's a beautiful drawing. We continued, we said, what, what is it that he wants to do? And he has ambitions and dreams. And he said, well, I want to do a hotel management course. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, if you want to do hotel management, you need to start by working in a restaurant. So I want you to go and find a restaurant and work as a waiter or washing dishes or whatever you can do. And then just to help him, because people like you know, other the waiters as well, uh, speaking English. We said, okay, we, we're going to pay for your English course. You do this 10 weeks English course, however, and then find a job as a waiter in Haridwar. That's exactly what he did. So he found a job, uh, sorry, this is where he lived. So this is where he lived and studied yeah. and had done his 10th exam. Then he found a job in this hotel. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's, this, is, this is him standing there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah. he's been in touch yeah. uh, and uh, sent, you know, New Year's greetings and what have you. And, and that, that's where he worked. <laughs> he worked there for a year or so. But when you have ambition and motivation, nothing stops you. Stops. Yeah. From Haridwar, On his own bat, he went all the way to Gujarat Mm -hmm. to work in Serena Resort. Oh, wow. Yes. And this is where he works now. Oh, wow. (laughs) And and, and, uh, he's in the housekeeping department over there. Yeah. And this is what he looks like Mm. now. Great transformation. Yes, yeah. and I think I'm really, really proud of him. Yes. And there are many other students, you know, as you know, lepr- yeah. leprosy is only one of our health projects. We also sponsor uh, diabetic children. And obviously, education is a big, uh, you know, department for us. So, um, but I think, you know, there are a number of things and you can see the transformation yeah. uh, we can bring about. Uh, in uh, young people from leper colonies. But I'm so much impressed with the transformation I saw in Vikas. And uh, I should say, ma'am, hats off to you. Hats off to SNJ Charitable Trust. You are doing a great job. We want to spread this message to other NGOs in the sector, you know, to come up with such good stories. Uh, which transform the lives of the children. The, the message I got from you, uh, we should go to other NGOs also. Our work should not uh, limit to one-time kind of activity. It requires a continuous follow-up, help, then follow-up, 
help then followers until unless they uh, they see their uh, they see themselves reaching their dreams so thank you very much thank you so much ma'am for your precious time and on behalf of my director and the whole nlr team again i would like to thank you and uh, would pray for you for your wellness and convey our regards to everyone in your family thank you very thank much thank you very much indeed thank you very thank much you so much ma'am